Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven Story Reviews. Hey there collectors, it's going to be Steven here and welcome back to another Dragon Ball review. Today we're going to be taking a look at a rather unique figure and once I saw that it happened, I had to pick it up. Today we're going to be taking a look at a figure from Kong Studios, now Beast Deities. We're going to be taking a look at the Goku Super Saiyan Blue 3 Kaioken action figure. Oh boy, that is a mouthful. I don't know if that is the specific name, but I, you, you see what's here on the screen and you know what it is. So this is going to be featuring battle damaged clothing and a translucent hair sculpt. This is really cool because this is going to feature a somewhat metallic shiny sheen to it like some of the SH Figuarts Kaioken figures. And this is gonna be right up the alley and down the gutter for the New York Comic Con event exclusive edition Kaioken Blue Goku that Tamashi Nations did a few years back and was just recently announced for a limited reissue, kind of sort of not really for Japan. That being said, this is going to be a third party figure and since it's sold out, it is looking at astronomical prices on the aftermarket. There may be a limited reissue and with that being said, is this going to be worth jumping on it if it gets reissued or paying the huge aftermarket fee? Let's take a look to see whether or not it's gonna be worth adding into your collection. When it comes to the looks department, obviously we, we have to say that this figure does look really, really cool. I will say that the hair is more so consistent with the more so light teal greenish blue, Super Saiyan blue than the like super broly movie blue. So it's not really, I think you know what I'm saying here, but some of the promo images did make it seem like it was in line with that color blue. And as we'll see at the end, it doesn't match up with the uh, Kaioken blue SH figure arts that has been released. But nevertheless, they did keep up, like I said, with the idea that they're going to be using the sort of shiny metallic paint apps that is going to be in line with the SHF lineup, except for the new Target and Walmart exclusive Kaioken Goku. But nevertheless, this is going to be fine. And of course, he is going to be featuring some battle damage. So the rips on his shirt are made of a somewhat softer plastic, which is nice, including his sleeves up at his shoulders. Those actually do not get in the way of the articulation whatsoever. And they are yeah, soft plastic, almost rubbery. What I will say is a bit disappointing is that, though Tamashi Nations was able to get this down pat with no issues, if you actually move any parts of the figure out of the box, like let's say for an example, the thigh swivel, you will see that where the part of the sculpt the thigh swivel was covering up, they did not apply the metallic or glossy or shiny whatever paint application, and you can see it is a slightly more reddish color, but you can see the normal color that Goku is supposed to be underneath. And this isn't only going to apply to his clothing, this will also apply to his skin as well. If you move the elbow, if you move the knee, you'll see that they didn't follow through with fully coating the figure. Now, when I initially got this, it was released in the summer of this year, 2023. I was a bit bummed at this and I thought, wow, that was pretty lazy. However, there have been some recent official Tamashi Nations product, most notably the Godzilla 2019 Night Color Edition, which did not only the same thing, but arguably worse. So am I upset about it? I mean, yes. However, in hindsight, I guess it's not that bad. Overall, Goku does look rather solid and is rather unique. So it's pretty fun. Articulation time, and when it comes to the hair, yeah, we got a little bit to talk about. So this is definitely like a bit of um, an iffy quality control situation because I do have the normal Super Saiyan 3 Goku and I do have the, what is it, the, the Xeno, the superhero, super Dragon Ball heroes, the, the, the black uh, clothing, translucent hair Vegito. Um, the quality control is rather inconsistent across uh, all three of them, considering they're using the same body and practically the same hair. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about this one and what is loose and what is what not loose. So I'm going to talk about the hair first because it's pretty great the way that they engineered it, I think, anyway. Um, so we do have this section here that moves here, and then we have this section bangs popped off that's all right uh which moves here they are going to be on swivels and hinges and they're going to each plug into each other so we can twist them and turn them and then they move up and down but of course if you do move the hinge 
then you can move those as well. So that actually does provide a nice range of movement. Oh, <laughs> we'll talk about that. Uh, I guess this is a good way to visualize it. Um, as long as you have the lower hair spikes, clear the portions of the body. So you can actually rotate the hair and have the hair point up all the way. I even did that for some of my photography. If you have the hair pointing to the left and to the right, you will have these lower hair portions, which do... Uh, collide into the back so you're going to have Goku looking down that is something to keep in mind um, so you want to make sure you're going to be doing that correctly I will say that in more so neutral poses you're going to actually sort of like the Super Saiyan 3 renewal in the SHF lineup you're going to have the hair point down in order to get Goku to sort of look straight ahead so let's go ahead and throw the bangs back on so you saw how the neck plugs into the body, and that's going to be a barbell style ball joint. And then Goku can look up that far with the hair down that far, as you saw a little bit, um, depending on how far the head moves down, the faceplate likes to pop off. For the actual neck in and of itself, I think that's plugged into the body on a ball joint, but um, it doesn't really want to move too much except for forward and back. So maybe that's on a hinge. I'm not quite sure. For the way that the shoulders are connected, there's a ball joint in here. It comes up and then the shoulders are plugged in on a ball joint, allowing for some good movement around in the shoulder cavity, which is good. You can actually kind of see it poking out there. This portion of the ripped clothing can actually pop off if you try to get that to slide all the way down. Then the shoulder plugs in on a ball joint so he can spin the arm all the way around. It's going to be same on the other side as well. And we can get Goku to T-pose, so that's pretty cool. No issues there. Dedicated bicep swivel, spin the arm around, and double hinge elbow. Cool. Oh, there you go. You saw the wrists. So the hand does pop off. You can see a ball joint there, and it does hinge. And then, because there's a peg that goes in the forearm, it does swivel around, and we can change the direction of the hinge. We are going to have a ball jointed ab crunch, which will help with moving Goku around. So we can get a little bit of rocking movement from side to side, forward and back, twisting and turning. And then we have a ball jointed waist, which will help move Goku as well. For the hips, they are going to be ball joint where they plug in. Mine are relatively loose. So you can kind of see they kind of just, uh, you know, with relative ease, I can spin them around. And the it's technically a swivel, but the hinge that allows them to kick out are loose as well. You can even see Goku's head wanting to tip backwards. Thigh swivel, spin all the way around. Oh, Goku can kick about that far forward and back, and then obviously from side to side, he can do that. Double hinge knees. Uh, they're kind of tight. You can even hear the plastic on mine. Ankles. They do twist and turn a little bit. Uh, forward and back movement is nearly non-existent, but we do have ankle rockers, which is really good. And then toe Hinge does move, but it's kind of tight and stuck. So I will say out of all of these Super Saiyan 3 uh, figures I have from Kong so far, this one is probably the most spotty on the quality control for the joints. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of disappointing, especially when we have the translucent plastic, which looks really cool. Um, I am worried about cracking in the hair, especially because this is harder plastic. And I will say you will need a support stand for this guy. Um, you're not going to get away with him standing up because he will topple over. Uh, for all of the Super Saiyan 3 figures that Kong has made, get a support stand. And it's a shame that they did not include one for the accessories. Articulation is pretty solid. Um, the hair is really neat. But in terms of quality control, some joints are okay. The others really aren't. Now, accessories, that's where this figure is going to be actually rather unique. I think it's pretty fun because Kong sort of nailed it. But at the same time, uh, they missed out on a couple of opportunities. So for this figure, we're going to get three additional face plates. We're going to get a halo that's going to be left over from the original Super Saiyan 3 release because this is basically just a repaint, but with the battle damage clothing. And then we're going to get a few alternate sets of hands and we'll take a look at those in a bit. So for the alternate face plates, you know, sort of by default, we get the smirking face plate. We are going to get the straightforward sort of neutral faceplate. All right, that's good. We are going to get the very shocked, wide-eyed faceplate. That's really cool. I like this. It's comical. And then we're going to get the screaming, angry faceplate. you love to see it. Now, by default, Goku is going to come with fists, so that's nice. 
Then we are going to get Kamehameha hand, so this way he can charge up and fire whichever pose you would prefer. We are going to get splayed out hands, which is great. I'm glad to see that this staple of the line of SH figure arts and, you know, Kong, Demonic Golf Fit, whatever, uh, is continuing. We do get left and right instant transmission hands, and then we get the usual uh, iconic Karate Goku hands, which is great to see. As I did make mention, we do get a halo as well, and it's very hard to see, particularly on this and the Super Dragon Ball Heroes, it, you know the one, especially if you've played the Budokai games, uh, the alt clothing Vegito, the translucent hair sculpt, it's hard to see where the hole is for the halo, but once you do find it, you just pop it in. Be careful, mine was bent uh, in the packaging as it came out, so... Uh, just a little bit of effort and you can bend it back into place if that is the case. Now, uh, no Kamehameha or any other energy effect, which I think could have really been used here. They had a lot of opportunities to do something cool, especially with the reds and the blues. Yeah, or even like an aura effect, because now it seems like with some of the other Goku and Vegeta figures that they're doing, they're kind of handing out the respective charge effects like uh, it's candy on Halloween. But nevertheless, if you need effect parts or support stands, which they should have included, you know I have videos to help you out. And now here will be a size comparison with Super Saiyan 3 Goku, the Super Saiyan 3 Blue Battle Damage Kaioken Goku, and the Super Dragon Ball Heroes Budokai Alternate Outfit Vegito Super Saiyan 3. There you go. So you can see exactly how big they're going to be. Spoiler alert, they're pretty much identical in size. But you get a good idea of how they'll look next to each other and with other figures on your shelf. So, buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. The original production run was a very much so sneaky drop, and at least for the North American market, and it sold out, basically. Now... When it comes to the aftermarket, I've seen this go for anywhere for 150 to 200 bucks. Personally, I do not believe that this is going to be worth it. I really hate to say that for some folks who are looking to pick this up, but when it comes to uh, quality and the price, if you were to tell me this is what I'm going to get for that amount, I would say no. Now, to my understanding, Kong is under Beast Deities now, that's a fact, but to my understanding, Beast Deities is doing another reissue of the Super Saiyan 3 hair and body, and hopefully there will be a reissue of this as well for a more affordable price. If that is going to be the case, I would say that's a bit more fair considering this is something that Tamashi Nations will not give the collector market. I'm pretty positive because I don't even think this comes from any sort of non-canon thing whatsoever, so that's good. So, if you do have a chance to pick this up for a reasonable price, I would say it's a fun piece to have, especially now that we can have like base Kaioken, we have Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, and now we can have Super Saiyan 3 Blue Kaioken, a fun evolution. Neat figure, neat concept, don't overpay if you get it. 